Welcome back to r slash legal advice, where people ask questions, get advice and we get satisfaction. Today we will focus on some legal advice stories from the UK and by the way, if you haven't already, please don't forget to check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash ripe YouTube for exclusive Reddit content. Without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. And the first one is titled, is it legal for my landlord to leave me with no hot water for a week? I am in England, hello folks, new immigrant back for trivial questions I did not manage to google. My boiler is on the fritz and stopped working a couple days ago. The problem has been diagnosed and the plumber is coming in for a fix next Thursday. I don't intend to pursue any legal action but I am curious, can I just be left with no hot water or heating for a week? I understand we are in the summer, but still. Where I am from I would be entitled to get a repair ASAP from whatever source at whatever cost within reason and deduct from rent against an invoice. Again I have no intention of doing this, just looking to understand how things are different. Cheers. Edit, thanks for the answers everyone, I learned a few new things today, sorry if I seem like an entitled a-hole, but I take showering really seriously, I promise I mean no harm, now onto that cold shower. And a user in the comment said, normally they would have to ensure other heating if necessary and hot water. For example, do you have a shower or a bath? Do you have a kettle? Is the repair necessary due to a part that needs to be ordered? If you owned the property, would you be able to get it fixed quicker? What would you do in the meantime? Those are the type of questions to consider when judging the landlord's actions. And guys, I'm curious, are you a fan of cold showers? I actually know plenty of people that enjoy cold showers, but honestly, it definitely is not for me. It's a good way to wake up, but still. The next one is an update to the hot water story. Obviously, I did not pursue any legal action, but I thought you chaps would appreciate a cheap laugh at my expense before I nuke this account. So the plumber came around a couple days ago, very nice chap, did a good job of it, no issues. I wondered if I should tip him, but don't know if that is a thing in the UK. He checks the little cupboard with the heater and whatnot and goes, how have you been showering? Well, I, true to my refusal to take sink baths, have been suspending a vat of warm water above my shower and dunking the shower hose in it for a nice 5 minutes of warm running water. I was very proud of my solution. He goes, why didn't you flip that switch over there? Turns out, unbeknownst to me or my letting agency, I have an emergency heater. It is slower of course, but overnight I would have hot water in the tank, which would be more than enough for each day's usage. I gotta say guys, I am in the same boat as the OP here. I have never seen an emergency water heater. Do you have something like that in your home? Let us know. And the next one is also from Legal Advice UK and it is titled Discovered that my wife and I share the same biological father, we have a child on the way, what do we do and what happens next? My wife and I have been recently discovered that we share the same dad. We've been together for 8 years and married earlier this year, we own our own home and we are expecting our first child in March 2020. Our bio father is still alive, but we don't want anything to do with him because of this and because he was a crappy person. From what I understand, my father who is persona non grata in both households did not remain in our mother's lives for long and while I knew a brief bit of info about him, my partner did not as he was an all around crappy person. Neither of our moms named him on the birth certificate as the father and in my wife's case she knew her mom's long term boyfriend as a father while I gained a stepdad. Our parents do not know this and we are not even sure if we should say anything. I will not disclose how we found out but I suppose I just wanted a bit of closure and her mom, who is one of my close friends, admitted to me at a rough moment that her daughter's dad was XX and how he was etc and this combined with other info which made it clear. We have had a private DNA test taken and the results suggested we were half siblings. Despite this our feelings for each other have not changed and we do not want to split. We have known each other since starting school and been through some hard times together. 
I am afraid what this means for us and our child, if that means he will have any health complications in life. My wife does not believe in terminating pregnancies personally and does not wish to terminate her first pregnancy, nor do I want her to. So we mean to see it through and hope for the best. We are lucky in that we don't have a history of illness in our mom's families, at least so hopefully that is better luck than some. I know incest is against the law and I am terrified that we could be found out if anyone looked into our histories or if they, I heard they do this, take a DNR sample of our son for genetic testing to make sure that he has no health problems and what could happen to us. I am not even sure what to do except maybe ensure that we do not have more biological children even if our child turns out without a problem just to be safe and adopt or something instead. I don't want anyone to find out, so I am keeping the info to a minimum and I will not let anything separate us and neither will she. What could happen to us? What can slash should we do? Should I just bury it? I am in England. And a person in the comments said, I don't have legal advice, I just wanted to say that this is such a crap situation and I hope you are both dealing with it as well as possible. It's not like you knew, but it sounds like the legal implications should be the same, regardless of you entering into a relationship completely unaware, which sucks because if you were both still completely oblivious to this, your baby would not be considered at risk. Also, are there any genetic conditions in your family of the bio dad's side? It might be worth quietly researching this, because if there are any, then your baby is more likely to be born with this condition. I wish you both the best of luck for the future, this is a nightmare situation and it is bound to place a lot of pressure on you as a couple. I hope you find a way to move forward. Honestly guys, what an awful awful situation, I feel really bad for the couple and I'm curious, what would you suggest them to do? Let us know in the comments and while you're at it, please don't forget to post some star emojis in the comments and also like the video if you want to support me. Thank you so much in advance. Update: Discovering my wife and I share the same biological father and have a baby on the way. I wanted to let people know that our child was born and is a healthy but very tiring baby. We have taken steps to check on their health and there's nothing out of the ordinary. Thank you to everyone who gave us advice and assurance we are doing fine or at least as fine as new parents can be. Our biological father has apparently died over the winter and hopefully anything he knew died with him. My wife and I have reaffirmed that we will stay together no matter what, but we will be taking steps to ensure that we don't have any more biological children to minimize the risk to a child. She has got a baby brain at the moment, but if it did come to it we would consider fostering or adoption at a stretch. I don't know if we would be looked into for that. It is not on our list of priorities right now, but yeah, thank you. And guys, please let me know in the comments if you enjoy these legal advice UK stories. I for one enjoy these quite a lot because nobody else is reading legal advice UK and it is nice to have a little bit of variety if you ask me. Drug dealer moved into neighboring flat and is threatening me. In England, so a few weeks ago, against lockdown recommendations, the agency managing my high-rise has allowed for new tenants to move into the penthouse. Two guys specifically, they seemed shady from the get-go, but I did not pay much attention to it, live and let live. However, since they moved in, they have been receiving a lot of visitors, 6 to 10 people a day, always different, that and the fact their guests often smoke weed right in front of the main door made me think they are dealers, no big deal, again, live and let live. And guys, I gotta say, I'm not sure if I would want drug dealers in front of my door, even though usually I agree with the live and let live, unless the people in question are criminals. I myself am a weed smoker, or rather I vape to cause the least possible annoyance in a secluded area near the building with no windows or people looking over where I don't bother anyone. Sometimes when I meet up with some fellow stoners from my building, there's a bunch of us given the building itself is mainly aimed at young professionals in the small park that belongs to the estate. 
again far from the buildings themselves to reduce any sort of bother for the neighbors. And unlike their guests, we don't leave trash around, not that it's important, just wanted to point out the difference. I don't keep much at home, a maximum of 5 to 6 gram at any given time and fill up every two weeks when I run out. Last Friday was one of those days, I met up with my plug and had the luck of running into said new neighbors. They gave me the stink eye, but I did not care much about it at the time. Gotta say guys, I love how non-confrontational <laughs> this guy is, so far at least. Skip forward to today, I was coming home from shopping and they cornered me in the lift and would not let me get out until they had a talk with me and in no uncertain terms told me that if I did not stop buying from my plug and started getting it from them, I quote, The police would be just the first of the consequences. I am fairly certain those consequences would involve physical harm, possibly even robbery. They only know which floor I live on, my floor has 6 apartments and in total 16 people living here, however, the top floor is a single penthouse where they live. I am aware that I am breaking the law, I am very aware of it. I also understand that here in London, police tends to be lenient towards smokers in general, rarely persecuting them unless they cause trouble. But right now I am quite afraid of these guys making good on their promise, reporting me to the police or breaking into my apartment or beating me up. We are talking about two 6 foot 4 bodybuilder type guys. One of the aforementioned stoner guys from the building also had a similar encounter. According to him, one of the new neighbors walked past him while he was smoking and yelled at him, You better be buying from me next time, or else... and punched his own palm. Though he did not take it seriously until he heard my incident. I can't really go to the police with this, obviously. What other recourse do I have that would expose me to the least possible legal scrutiny? Should I just report them to building management or crime stoppers? And a user in the comments said, You definitely can go to the police. The police cannot arrest everybody who has ever talked on a spliff. Just make sure there's none in your house and call the police away from the flats. You don't want these guys hearing you do it. The police are not going to be fussed that you have smoked weed. They probably won't even be that fussed that somebody is selling weed, especially if it is less than a half dozen patrons a day. They will be incredibly fussed that people are going around threatening people with violence as they go about their daily business, as that is a potential assault call they've got to deal with at a later date. And to be honest guys, these neighbors seem like absolute douchebags and I'm curious, what would you do with these drug dealers? Would you get the police involved or handle it on your own? Even though that's gotta be difficult, considering these people are built like bodybuilders. And the next one is an update to the drug dealer story. Damn, that was a roller coaster. After the advice received on the original post, I called the police. They came that night and took my statement, and they also asked the few people who had similar encounters with the guys. And of course, they have gotten their camera footage from the lifts as well, showing them threatening me. Sadly, no audio. And yesterday, they were arrested. One of my friends living in the block was just outside the block and called me. Apparently, a bunch of police officers came and took them into custody. According to her, apart from the two men being carried into a police car, there was a lot of evidence boxes carried out as well. By the time I've gotten downstairs, it was only three officers waiting for the fourth to come downstairs and they left as well. I did not have the courage to ask them about the case and I doubt they would have answered. However, I did ask our concierge about the whole case and some new information came up. The flat they were staying in, as it turns out, was used as an Airbnb, which is strictly against the rules of the building's letting terms. I've checked my contract and it is indeed there, emphasizing on the fact that this is a residential estate and no short-term subletting is allowed. The fact that multiple tenants complained about them, after every party the balconies and areas below were littered with spit, cups and even a bunch of shattered beers and wine bottles, I cannot even think what would have happened if those actually hit someone. Throwing stuff out from 20 plus floors should be a punishable criminal offense, not sure if it is in the UK though. The contract with the person subletting has been breached, thus the apartment became available for rental soon. Heck, I might just move over there as it is much bigger than my current one with better layouts, amenities and it has a proper balcony. 
As for emptying the house, it was completely unnecessary. While the officers did come into the apartment to take my statement, they showed zero intent to actually search around and in fact we had a somewhat pleasant chat. I expected them to be much more… aggressive I guess. Coming from an ex-Eastern Bloc country made me realize what actual proper police force work is. The two gentlemen took my statement, only asking clarification questions. Back in my home country, they would have pressed me with questions that were quite directed and would force you to accidentally admit wrongdoing and the only comment I've gotten about me smoking weed was that You should not be doing that. Oh, one funny takeout out of the story, said friend who was downstairs and saw the cops was actually smoking a joint right next to them, none of the officers even cared about it. Nonetheless, I would like to thank all that answered my post and helped me calm my nerves. And the last one is from the regular American legal advice and it is titled Sister has put me on the no visitation list, unable to see our mother at the hospital in Connecticut. I will try to do my best to give as much information as possible without muddying up the main points. You can call me P, I live in North Carolina, my sister's name is M, her and my mother live in Connecticut. Monday I get a text from an old friend in Connecticut stating that my mother is in the hospital and it is very dire. I called the hospital to find out information, my mother had some sort of accident, came to the hospital unconscious, had emergency surgery to relieve a brain bleed and is now in a medically induced coma. I get in touch with my sister, who by the way hates me, nothing I did personally, she just hates everyone. She gives me bits and pieces of information, but ultimately she tells me that one, our mother fell and second, if I don't get here quick enough, she will not hesitate to pull life support without me present if it goes that way. Tuesday, still having very little communication from my sister about our mother, sister claims to be sending out mass texts saying stuff like Stop calling all the hospitals in CT to find her and I don't need a stampede in the waiting room. I am very concerned as you may imagine, she is telling me that our mother is not getting better, that there are no signs of her getting better. So I contact our adopted brother to let him know, because M did not even have the decency to call me personally and she did not call him as well. Adopted brother goes to the hospital to see our mom and then M calls the police and has him escorted from the hospital. M is now furious, why? I don't know, but she decides to make it so no one can now visit our mother, not even me. She does not have power of attorney, our mom does not have an advanced directive, M and I are blood relatives of our mother. I am the firstborn child, M is the middle child, we have another brother who lives out in Arizona who cannot make the trip. There is the adopted brother too, however legally he's not adopted, we just took on that role and it has been this way for many years. I have taken Thursday and Friday off of work and I plan to make that 10 to 12 ish hour drive to see our mother, but M is making this very difficult. I don't understand how she can legally do this, withhold me from seeing our mother. I live in NC with my fiance and 3 year old child, both of which are staying behind because my fiance fears what M might do. Does M actually have a right to hold me back like this? Or is she just bluffing hoping I won't call her out on it? Trust me, if I had the money to see an attorney, I would have called ASAP. Other information that might not be important, my mom called me two weeks ago to make sure that any of her money she leaves behind goes to me. And now two weeks later under the care of M, she certainly has an accident and M is ready to pull the plug so quick, it scares me. And a user in the comments said, when you get to the hospital ask to see your mom. If you are told that you cannot, calmly ask them why and then tell them that you are disputing your restriction, there are hospital employees that are specifically responsible for mediating these family disputes. If you come across as the calm, rational sister, I think you will be able to get yourself off of the list and see your mom relatively quick. Good luck. And an update to this sister has put me on the no visitation list story. Hey all, this is the OP's fiance. P is in Connecticut visiting his mother so I am posting on his behalf. P got to the hospital and tried to find out information about his mom. 
and she was not even showing up in the system. M had done something to where she was incognito or something, he asked to speak with a social worker about the case and he was waiting for a long time. Eventually he said F it and went straight to the ICU, he knew she was there anyways, the charge nurse saw that he had called the hospital on Tuesday morning to make a note that he was going to be there and to not let M make any decisions on her own. That phone call saved him. It was confirmed that M does not have power of attorney, P had printed out a picture of our daughter, his mom's only grandchild and left it in the room with her. After a while he left to get food slash shower etc, M comes, finds the picture and rips it up and throws it in the trash. I have photo proof, I told P to take a picture as evidence of how utterly bad his sister is, M was so upset that her little plan had failed and she threw a fit. M is now saying that she is going to get a lawyer and a social worker of her own to get her way. We have absolutely no idea what she is fighting for here. Money? Control? Control so she can get the money? We don't even know how much money their mother has in the first place. We are not concerned about no damn money, we just want his mom to live. I told Pete to let Steph know that if his mother wakes up with him not present, they need to get a third party translator, the mom does not speak English because we would not trust M to actually tell the truth in translating. M is so upset that she has told M that she is not coming back to the hospital at all, she asked that P would not let anyone else come to visit. Not sure if he's going to stick by that or not, there are some other family members who want to see her as well. Their mother has been making some slight improvements but the situation is still very bad. P was able to get a social worker to okay that all decisions are to be passed to him first, M second. This was approved because of M's actions here, her refusing to come back, her being hostile etc. Sorry if I have left out anything, ask questions if you want, thanks everyone for being so positive and providing many helpful answers and advice. Saturday afternoon update, the mom is off the ventilator, breathing on her own and she's talking, weekly though, this is huge guys, she's going to be able to tell her side of the story and M is so screwed. There's new evidence suggesting that M is doing this for money, hidden in the house. Makes sense because she is threatening to call the police on anyone who comes by. I am letting P have some alone time with his mom without being asked too many questions by me, Things are happening though. And guys in this case I did some further research and I could not really find out much aside from the fact that the mom is alive and well. However unfortunately I was given no information about the crazy sister. Either way I hope you enjoyed the legal advice UK stories, please let me know in the comments if I should continue with them or not. And in addition, in case you are interested in more ripe content, then I suggest to head over to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube for more exclusive Reddit content only read on Patreon. This includes subreddits such as Just No Mother in Law. Thank you very much for your support and please don't forget to click the bell button to not miss any of my uploads. I hope you have a fantastic day and I see you again tomorrow.